excited. All right, this is gonna be good. So, um, let me get my little bio of sorts together, um, which I don't need. I mean, Ursula is an amazing hairstylist. Um, she's worked with Rihanna Zendaya, Queen Latifah, Gabrielle Union, Candy Burris, Keisha Cole, Remy Ma, Mary J, Carrie Washington, Serena Williams, Anita Baker, Laverne Cox, Nia Long, Jill Scott, Kiki Palmer, Naomi Harris, Justine Scott. List goes on of different people, but she's not just a hairstylist. And I, I see her as like a part of pop culture. Like I remember, again, I was playing at the top of the hour Rihanna um, umbrella and the haircut is part of that like even that whole moment and so that was her and then even more recently things she's done with Zendaya and they're just like all these different moments so anyway I'm gonna bring her in that's a good little you know one two intro um but I want to bring her into the room uh, Ursula Ursula I'm so happy to have you here for real, for real. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wait, am I'm I crunched? Good. Because after every live, everybody's like, oh, you did good, but you was you were mad tight. You was I mean, you know, when there's two people up there, then it may, it makes us do this, but you know, know, that's why I sit back I hope here. That but I, I can okay, see good. your head's chopped off a little, but okay, that's good. All right. It's How good. are you? Where are you? I am at home where I've been for the last five or six weeks. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is Ow. crazy! In Brooklyn, right? In Brooklyn. Yes. Okay. I'm in BK okay. Baby. So, so how's that been? Like, how's life under lockdown been for you? And you are also a salon owner again. Hearts going out yes. to you in that regard, and just kind of all of that. But how's how's life on lockdown been? You know, I wish I could have something bad to say. Like, you know, I've been saying it, you know, like I've been mostly positive <laughs> and every once in a while you want to cry. But, you know, it hasn't really been that bad, you know, and I, you know, I didn't want to, I'm not jumping around, but it hasn't really been that bad. You know, I've been busy for quite some time. So to sit down for a month is not that bad. I, you know, I've just been using my time very wisely and, you know, cleaning out closets that's been sitting there and, you know, cupboards and throwing out expired yes. food that I never touch because I'm never here. So <laughs> it's actually not it's not all bad. Not all it's bad. not all bad. Okay. So you've been in yeah, and you also have your Ursi's chair on Sundays mm -hmm. that you've been doing where you do like demos yes. and talk to people and it's been good. Yeah. I've 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 been keeping busy with Ursi's chair and actually that's been my my like I think like I work once a week now. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I, have, I, have, I work on Sunday now. I work on Sundays, and um, you know, I, I created Earth Sea Chair. I created Earth Sea Chair uh, uh, maybe like a few years ago, maybe like three, four years ago via Twitter. But I was so busy, you know, trying to do all, trying to be, trying to be busy doing all these projects, and just never had time to really put that time into it. So I was like, you know what? Let me let me get busy and try to do it because I've also been, you know doing little shows like I had a little BT hair show and you know all these little opportunities so I was like you know what let me let me do it myself and put something out there that I feel great about you know I love that yes and the people yeah. need it it's been good it's one of my weekly corona content like moments like I have that oh, yeah. I do like Nikki's walk in Wednesdays on Wednesday oh, I, love a it. Dance I love it classes I go to but now yeah. I have my own like corona schedule mm -hmm. um <laughs> But Good, uh, okay, cool. So, yeah, it's cute. So let's talk about it. Like, how's how's it been? Okay, I'm trying to decide right now if I'm going to. We'll do Corona later. All right, you're iconic. Okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> oh well, well, I was listening, you, and you of... said you you said you said that I was a part of pop culture, and I was like, oh, I never heard that before. I I actually like that it's real like when I think about these moments especially when the hair is so important a part of it like I look at these things and that's why I've even created this platform and I think there are more people like me who do this but I look at these moments and I see past just the front facing image or moment and I'm like oh my god look at the hair look at the makeup look at the styling look at the set all of those things right. especially when pieces of it stand out and you've made and I think even when Rihanna was coming out with and I don't know if that was you guys' first time working together um during mm -hmm. good girl gone bad or it was just mm -hmm. early on but it was definitely definitive for her 
You know what I'm saying? Like that was a defining part of that. And even when you, you know, you go to loud or rated all of those moments, there were always something different. And you would look at all those covers you did during that time. It was like, oh, she yes. was out here. That's kind of when she came into her own. Okay, I'm done. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, 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 I would, we worked before, before Good Girl Going Bad, we worked together for like maybe a few months before because um, I had just started working with her and she still had long brown hair. So we had like a little stretch with that, like a small stretch with that. And then I think I came in to work with her first time was Unfaithful. She had a song named Unfaithful. She did a video for it. Oh, okay. And I came in on that yeah. video to do her. I actually filled in for like, it was a two-day video job. I filled in for the first day. And then I just started to fill in with her all the time. And then after when she was getting ready to work on Good Girl Gone Bad, she was like, you know what? I want you to give me my new look. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Like, because we already was having so much fun. We were actually having a lot of fun with the long brown hair. <laughs> but it was getting a little, you know, it was a new project was brewing. So it was time for some new energy, a new look. And, you know. It just happened. Like, I didn't think about it. We just did it. How did that happen, though? Like, is that part of what you decide? Like, how did you guys decide that's what it was? It was pretty, it was pretty collaborative because she, we were, we kind of like spirit animals. We're like, spirit, like, we're like, I don't know if we're like, she's like my hair soulmate. So we think alike. So as soon as she was getting tired with something, I was already getting tired with it too. And she was just like, "All right, we're ready for something new." So we always we were always on the same page when it came to that part. So it was just like she just said, like you know, and I was coming in with different hairstyles. Like I had just started working with her, so I was like, I was young, like what, 10, 15 years younger. So I was changing my hairstyle every week, two inches, twenty inches, all different type of bobs and look. So she was like, "Oh, okay." So she knew that I wasn't afraid to to play around. So she was like, "I want you to do my new look." And I think I wanted, you know, she wanted a bob. But I was like, all right, let's, let's do it. Let's try it. And we just went in. So it was, it was collaborative. Yeah. You know, it was collaborative, yeah. but it was, it was yeah. both of us working together. And we both knew that this was a, an important move because everybody was so adamant on her not cutting her hair, not dyeing her hair black, keeping her long brown hair. So we knew that when we did it, we had to really make sure that shit was hot. Oh my gosh. And it was hot. And again, then you guys went on and all these other looks. So how, like, did you feel pressure like every time? Because again, you're creating all these different looks and Rihanna's in the spotlight, especially at this point. So do you feel pressure as a hairstylist to create all these, like to keep creating? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you, 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 the pressure's on me because it's funny because people, oh, you really only see artists Sometimes people, you think you kind of feel like you see them every day because you see them on, you know, tabloids and TV every day, but you really only see them once every couple of weeks or a couple of months. So those downtimes, I'm like going crazy trying to figure out this. And Rihanna hit me like, what we doing? And you know, it's like real. Yeah, y'all know, y'all know the bad y'all when she hit you like, what we doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of this. It's like, uh oh. So yes, there, there is, there is pressure on it because. You know, when you think of somebody that works behind the chair, it's fine. Like, if if, if her hair doesn't come out that great, or, you know, the only thing she has to really answer to is her husband, her best friend, that's all, that's it. But when we put something on somebody, the whole exactly. world is coming at us. You know, so, yes, the answer is yes. There's a lot of pressure that goes behind <laughs> that shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And how, okay, how do you deal with that? And, and also, I want to know almost what's your research method to to stay so fresh like because you're always coming up with these different ideas how do you remain inspired and how do you eat and how do you deal with the pressure well for me with the pressure it's like it's like it's been like a a, a emotional trial and error you know so i've been doing it for this for double digits maybe 20 years so with every wave is always a different way to deal with it because when I first came into it it wasn't that much it wasn't no social media so we didn't have to worry about every every time you open your phone you know what I mean so for me I just try my best <laughs> obviously it's always gonna it's always gonna it's always gonna stress me out but I try my best that when I um do like a really big red carpet or something like that after I post my picture it's just one of my tricks that I do to keep my brain you know keep myself sane I'll, I'll post a picture but I won't look back at the likes for like the whole day because you find yourself going back to just look and look and look and look and look and that's already like you know so i just kind of set it and just forget it yes and leave it leave it that way as far as inspiration <laughs> I, I take it from it. everywhere I, I yeah i take it i take inspiration from everywhere like cartoons you know 
TV, like just I take a walk and just see landscaping and see a tree set a different type of way and like, oh my God, I want to create something like that. So it could be anything. Other hairstylists inspire me. You know, Nikki Downs, I always joke with her. Like when she do some dope shit, I'm like, I take like, oh really, it's on? All right. Let's go. You know, like I'm very competitive. I'm very competitive, and and it's not it's not coming from a malicious place. It's just coming from a a, a, a good place. You know, because I like to I like people to to to, to set fires under me and, and make me want to do something. You know, so looking at other hairstylists' work and you know inspires me because a lot of times we think alike. There's times where, where where we think alike, and I have something in my brain, and I really want to get it out, but I just haven't had the client or the time or the project to really get it out. And then you see one of your peers, and you're like, damn. She did it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, you know, it's, it's, I just take inspiration from everywhere. Like I said, TV. I love, I love, I love the '70s era. I love the '60s era. So I, I love, I love taking old things, making it new again. You know, because all of this shit has been done before. Let's let's keep it super real. You know, it's yes. all been done before. So yeah. it's just about really um putting a signature on it and just making it making it hot. And I think subconsciously, I've always wanted to make the world and the world meaning you know our industry included like you know just red carpets and just everything that's part of our world subconsciously I, I always wanted them to realize and to understand that hair is very important it's a very important important part of this whole shit like it's not it's nothing mm -hmm. happening if the hair is not right period doesn't matter <laughs> no absolutely matter. I, that's how I feel like that's why I was like even at the top of the hour I'm like Yo, I'm feeling for the hairstylists and the hair industry right now, but I'm feeling for us too. Like, I need y'all. Like, and I know, mm -hmm. I know there's girl. I know yeah. the girl girls are even times a hun a thousand. Like, yo, realizing the importance of our image yeah. makers and definitely our hairstylists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how did you get? Your, how did you get your training though? Too like, how did you come up? Give me. You don't have to give me the long version. But like, you know, when you okay. first realized that you wanted to make hair a career and then how you built to the point that you are now. Well, choosing to to do hair was pretty much like an escape because I was in like junior high school and everybody was filling out their little high school forms and do what they wanted to be. And I did. So I was just like, I want to do hair. So I'm on there. She was like, all right. My mother's Caribbean. So she was like, all right, well, we're going to figure it out. So she went, she, you know, she found out and I started doing hair in high school. But, you know, throughout in high school, I worked after school on the weekends. Like, I was just doing, cutting everybody's hair, doing hair, just having a good old time. But I never really thought past high school. So when it was time to graduate, again, everybody's knowing what college they want to go to. And I'm just like, and my mother's like, well, time for school now because you already did that. So I went to Brooklyn College and was failing for like t two years. And But at the time, I was still juggling this whole salon, the salon life and I was meeting people, partying, hanging out. People was coming through the salon that was connected and was connecting me to, you know, people in the industry. So I finally got the opportunity to go on tour with Candy. And it was like my mid-semester, like sophomore year. And I was like, yep, I'm out. Because I was like, I'm not doing nothing here for real. But falling asleep in class. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> trying to cheat. Yeah. Trying to ask somebody to help me out. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm out. I left. I went to um. Yeah. Tour. Candy, I left my clients at the salon and everything. I just was like, I got to take this opportunity. I got to see what's up. And I left my clients. I went on tour for like six weeks. I got on tour. I, first night, I bawled my eyes out because I was like, what the fuck did I do? Like, I've never been on tour. I've never even been away from my family, friends that long. Like, six weeks was a long time back then. Like, you know, it's still a long time to me, but that's a long you never, time. You've never been on tour. you never you never really been in the industry. Like, you did like one person here, two person here. You know, I was doing Remy sometimes. Keisha Cole, I had did a few times, but you know, this was like a big deal. So I said, all right, got on to, like I said, I cried the first night. And after that, it was a breeze. Like, I just loved it. Came back from tour and it was like, all right, can't go back to school. Got to rebuild my clientele. I need money too, because the money situation, like they was taking forever to pay me. So I was just like, okay, I got to figure out how to make this yes, right. Because that my part. mother's like, you left school, <laughs> you know, you, you live in my basement, but you still got to pay me rent. So... <laughs> All right. So now my main my main focus is to make it to really solidify this what this is what freelance lifestyle into a career for myself because I gotta I gotta I gotta make money I gotta live and I like nice things that's the other motivation like I really like nice things so you know <laughs> first you gotta make money so came back and just was really diligent on rebuilding my my salon clientele and got that back up and then you know my popularity raised a little bit because now I'm kind of like working with celebrities and you know 
I'm here, I'm there. So that my clientele is growing really nicely. And I'm kind of stepping out and just doing celebrities here and in just by recommendation, but no agent. So now I'm screwed because I don't really know how to work this computer. You know what I mean? Like, I got to do these invoices and I'm trying to do mm -hmm. them. It's a whole thing. So finally, I go, I'm meeting people it's in the whole street, thing. friends, you know, yeah, makeup artists are recommending me. And finally, um, I had worked with Keisha Cole maybe like two years prior. They shelved her, but they brought her back out. And she had remembered, she remembered me and she wanted to work with me for this project. And the makeup artist that she worked with was my friend and he, and he had an agent. So it all kind of just, it all just lined up. And my, the agent hit me and was like, yo, finally, yeah. after I was stalking her for like six months, she was never hitting me back because I didn't have no money for her. <laughs> but she was like, whatever, I had no time. So finally she saw money and she was like, let's go and got an agent. And then it all just, yo. Uh, there. yeah. But I, I worked That's in the salon so for like almost, almost 10 years. I did like 10 years in the salon. Yeah. Wow. Like years, and now, okay, so how did you, and now, how long have you had your salon? My salon is now seven years old. Yep, I opened in 2013. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. How do you yeah. juggle, like, because you're still actively working, like, a lot, like, yeah. out, out, outside of the salon. How do you juggle that, both of those? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, what the hell? It's it's just you so are, much. You I'm tell me. I don't even like, know how honestly, I'm doing this. Nothing happens without a solid team. That's it. Nothing happens without a team. Like you know, and I, I feel so bad sometimes. Dream work. Yes. Yeah, I feel I feel bad because I really wish I could be like you know I'll be sitting there and I'll be doing numbers and I'll be here and I'll be doing this and I'll be back and forth. And I, be, I don't do that. Because I really have a solid team, and I think that was that was one of the things when I, you know, people was pushing me to open a salon for a long time, and I was like, look at me, I'm 17, y'all, y'all, I, I could barely count my money. Like, what are y'all talking about? Like, y'all really think I could open a salon? Like, I'm, I'm not responsible enough at 17. So, you know, I, I was That's always doing myself. That's you even in, in know you're way. not responsible enough. Yeah. So, so when I finally felt responsible enough to open one, I also knew what my strength and weaknesses were and it's not that it's not back and forth it's being creative so what i made sure that to get somebody to help me that is really academic and really really can sit still like i'm a creative person like I, my my strong point is being at the salon with my stylist and helping them with things and talking about styles and figuring the creative part about it uh, about out you know what i mean so yeah. i kind of got over feeling guilty about it and realized that no like you did great. You actually laid the foundation because everything that I thought about is is what's is what's turning in there. Like that, that's the wheels that's turning. Yeah. Well, I the foundation that I you know I, the aesthetic how I want things to be how I want them to move like everything. So, I think my answer to that <laughs> is having a really good team and, and learning how to delegate. You know, my mother is. I always tell the story that my mother comes to the salon sometimes because she's like part of the team. Like she brings all the cleaning supplies and everything, and she's all in the business. She feels so good about it, right? And then she'll complain about one person by spending too much on paper towel. And, and I'm like, Ma, like, I, I don't care. Like, you know, I'm like, Ma, like, I have, bigger, I have bigger things to think about. So if I really sat there and went through everything, all these little things, like, I mean, I, I know some people would be like, that's wrong. But you have to be able to delegate and let people make their best decisions in their you know, in their in their category and let them do it. And they obviously, you know, I, I have my meetings once a month and go over things, but I think that's what it is, just really having a strong team that you believe in. Teamwork. I love that. Yeah. A strong team. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about some of your most memorable moments as you've been out here in these streets creating iconic looks. Because there's so many. Tell me some of your favorites. Uh you mean look wise? <laughs> Or you mean just a moment that happened Look to me? Like, what? Yeah. like um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Give I me a so moment. Many. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. I think the obviously the Rihanna moment will never. It, nothing could ever top it, change it. We can't redo it. Like that is a moment in time that was like ah. Yeah, I'm so I, I look at. I'm ready to get emotional <laughs> because it's, it was. It's like ten years of like fucking madness. Good madness too, like just amazing shit. So I'll never forget that era. That that really ch shaped this my whole life. Um, so I'm gonna leave that alone because then it's gonna get all messy and crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think another memorable, mem too. another memorable moment for me, career wise, is when I got my I got a contract with Unilever to be their global ambassador. Well, at the, at that moment in time, I was actually contracted to be Motion's global ambassador. 
And why it sticks out to me is because when I got that opportunity, I never even thought about it. Never even thought that was a that was an option for me to be a spokesperson to to get paid and not really have to do hair like just talk. All right, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, just want me to talk. Yeah, and you know, and, and teach and have a pack, and, and you know, and I never thought about it. So that really stuck out because at the time, a, a lot of my fr- people who like were in the business before, longer than me that knew different sides of it were like, you know what, no one's getting contracts right now. So that was a plus. And on top of that, my agent. As hard as she was working, she didn't. She didn't go out and get it. They actually came and sought after me. Like they was like, "Who's doing Rihanna's hair? We want that person." So that made me feel good. So I that that yes. sticks out to me. And you know that's why I'm very adamant with a lot yes. of um, passionate stylists or stylists that are you know on the outside just looking in like, "Oh my god, I want to be a celebrity hair stylist." Like be open minded because I never even thought that that was an option. You know, and some people are so adamant about being celebrity, celebrity, celebrity stylist, and it's not for everybody. Like, it's really not for everybody. So you have to be open. If you you could be a spokesperson, you could you could work at a lab. Like, there's so many different things in different avenues in this beauty world that that you can really make money and you can still be creative and still still look still be have a be part of your passion. You know, so just be open minded because there's a lot more yeah. things out there than just, you know, celebrity here. Yes, major key, <laughs> write it down. Um, okay, so then tell me what are common misperceptions of being a celebrity hairstylist? That we ain't doing no work and we just getting cute and taking Instagram pictures and all glitz and glamour. That is a total <laughs> lie. Like, you know, <laughs> it's a total lie. Like, you, let, let me be very clear. Like, I love my job because I, I can't think of any other career that I would have the amount of freedom that I ha- that I have. You know what I mean? Like, I could drink on the job. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody drug testing. You know what I'm saying? All these cool things. Like, you could have, it's, it's not like, you know, it's not it's not an average job, right? You know, my job, I'm going to work, it's a red carpet. It's a, it's a cocktail party. You know, I'm backstage sitting. I've already worked for the day. My client is, you know, th- those things do happen. But on the real, on some real shit, it's real work. It's real work. Like, there's jobs like I spoke to Kim Kimball last week on my live. Like, did she, she? There's jobs that she's been prepping for for like three weeks, and it happens like this. That's it, you know. So yeah. it's a lot. A lot goes, but you know, you have a client like like I said, you have a client that's coming into the salon for a blowout, and you already know what she did. You know her attitude. You know how she is. You know how uh, you know how. But we got in forty five minutes. I'm doing a blowout for a red carpet, and I'm talking about it for about two weeks, and it's a blowout. <laughs> it's only a blowout. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a couple of girls that could blow out like me, but you know, I I gotta have a conversation with the with the with the with, you know with the stylist. I gotta have a conversation with the makeup artist because she wanna do a wing lash. So is is the curl gonna sit? Like, it, it, it's it's so intricate. It's really a lot of work, and, and I and I consider that I call that the business of hair. Like, you could make a whole a whole a whole three weeks talking about one ponytail for a red carpet. <laughs> so there's a lot of work. There's, you know, there's a lot. You know, there's a, there's a lot of research that goes behind this other conversation. My agent is talking to their people. You know, like my people talking to their people. I'm talking to the makeup artists. I'm talking to hair companies. They shutting me down. Y'all think it because we, you see us posting. You know, this hair from this company. It was great. You know how much work we got to do to get that hair. How many promises we got to make. It's it's a lot that goes behind Ooh. being a celebrity hairstylist. And you know, it's it's really good. It's rewarding, but. We are actually working, guys. Like, it's not just fun and glitz and glam. And, and if that hair don't come out right, <laughs> and, your client, and your client read them comments, if, if that hair don't come out the way she wants, if the people, if the internet start going in, <laughs> the internet down, start attacking and, you, and your celebrity clients start hitting tell you. Tell me up, about, like, you don't have to tell me about the. <laughs> you what's the that moment that back? that happens? What's a moment? You don't have to tell me the style, uh, but can, if you can think back to when that's happened before, how does that? How does the? How did the client react? I think that for me, and was it having, something that you guys thought was good beforehand? Oh, before the internet was. started attacking. I, yeah, I, I've had that situation <laughs> where where uh, it just didn't go right. You know, it, it really didn't go right, and, and everybody loved it, and I hated it, and the client loved it. But there's times when you, when you think it's great and your client doesn't love it either, or it's it, or it's totally fine. But the, yeah. the internet just always got something to say. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now it's it's a, it's a lot. It, it, you know, so it's so being a celebrity hair hairstylist is it's bigger than than doing an amazing ponytail, amazing blowout, um, amazing lace front. It's it's bigger than that because yes, there's a thousand girls that could do it, but it's a certain temperament that goes behind it, and it's just, you, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. <laughs> Ah, no. It's not for everybody. Okay, so tell me how you feeling about things moving forward now. Let's. We're, I'm gonna kind of do a little Corona talk real quick, and then I'm gonna get into some of your favorites, and then we are gonna close out. Okay. Um. But yeah. So how are you feeling in this? What are you thinking? What's on your mind? <laughs> I mean, at first I, I couldn't really see. It was very foggy because I didn't I didn't understand because they had it so like don't touch, not even don't even touch your mother. You know, if you don't live with her, like it's a, it had you so afraid to even be around anybody. But now that we go, go you know, we kind of like they say the curve and all these things. I can see my way a little bit more, and I feel like when it comes to the beauty business, you could look at it and, and say that it 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 hurt us, right? Because we we can't open our salons, we can't get our clients ready for a red carpet, none of those things, but. It's not going to last forever. I don't believe it will last forever. What I do believe on the back end of it, it will bring Wait, I think you're frozen. Up. Are you frozen? Oh, no. Sorry, guys. Ursula tapped out. Let me see if I can get her back on. Ursi. Ursi. You were right in the middle of giving us a word. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. We back. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I do think, yeah, right now, it's, it's definitely hurt the industry. We can't make money and blah, blah, blah. But we are part of an industry that can make money again. We will make money, money again because I think, one, people, the average consumer, the corporate America, everybody has realized how important and essential the hairstylist and barber is. So now Absolutely. we have to fix this part for the Absolutely. for the future, so that this part doesn't happen again. And we have to figure it, yes. it's, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to happen. But like I was saying before, I think that it will. I think for some quite some time now, a lot of different components have came in and devalued our industry. Like what? A lot of things. Everybody wants things quicker. Everybody wants things cheaper. Everybody can do hair now. Everybody can do makeup now. So it's everybody. Like it's, it's Do you just think that social you know? media has anything to do with that? Social media is a, is a part of it. I don't think it's 100% a the part of it. I think it's also just time. You know what I mean? It's just it's just the evolution of time and skill and just just the world. Yeah. But in social media, definitely, we can talk about that, but I think it definitely plays a, 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 a certain part in it. But it's just the industry has just devalued in such a bad way. You know, we have everybody doing hair. You know, everybody's just doing it in their backyard, in their front yard, in their kitchen, everywhere. So I think now, <laughs> you know, with, with this whole thing, like I, you and Chucky were speaking about this, that, you know, when we're on sets now, the value has to go up because we're risking our lives to come out now and things have to change. So before, when you guys were trying to rush us up. and trying to save money, Try to save money and save time and have hair and makeup work at the same time and, and nails peeping in from the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, like, Yo. said, it's going to go back. <laughs> it's going to go back. Because before, that's how it was. Before, we had the budgets. We had the money. We had the time. You know what I mean? We had the budget. We had the money. We had the time. So hair took their time. Makeup took their time. And then we worked together. So now, I feel Everybody like the, the, took the, their on, time the, the set life. Can work yeah, their on, the set life. Yeah, the on set life, you know, well, the, the the whole that that whole VIP and the exclusive experience of set life will come back. I do believe that part will, will be strengthened. So I'm still thinking about the salon part and how those will be strengthened. But either way, it's gonna be it's gonna it's going to be because now if I can't have 20 people in my salon waiting around like how you normally would be would now I have to have 10. So the, I'm sorry guys, but the price may have to go up a little bit now. It's a little exclusive. Price now. went up. Cause now I got now I got to deal with you one on one. I gotta make sure I gotta clean up before you. I gotta clean up after you. I gotta clean up during you, and I gotta make sure when you go, I gotta make sure everything is right for the next person. So that the the value may go back up. Let's see. I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. 
Got you. I like that. I haven't when heard we can. that perspective when of it yet. Yeah, when we can. Yeah, yeah when, when we, we can. can when we can. Because people need these girls need their wig. They need their weave. They need their wig. They need they they need they need their glasses. Child, they need their hair done. I need no, my shape off. Like, need... They need their hair done. Hello. And it's funny yeah. because the industry all also was turning into this. Um, like I said, everybody's doing hair, right? And it's not that's not always a negative thing. That's a, also a great thing because that means the economy, more money is coming into our in our in our industry, right? But everybody's doing hair now. But what happened with the whole salon industry is that a lot of the girls did, don't want to work for salon owners anymore. They, everybody want to want to work for themselves. So now that actually might be a good, mm. a better thing. You know, it, it was it was causing some of the salon owners to, to suffer because everyone want to work for themselves. Uh, no one want to work work under an umbrella. You. you know what I mean. So now that option may yeah. become stronger because it's more of a private option. Like you people are in their suites now, so you know I'm. It's only me and you. I'm doing you, and then you're gonna leave, and I'm gonna take my next person. So we have options out there. It's gonna. It's we're gotcha. gonna. They're gonna figure something out. We we figure something out after every tragedy that we have been through, and we just been stronger for it. So you know, we'll see what happens. Gotcha. Got you. But you want to, I mean, your salon is, that's your space of where you're able to educate people and able to groom people, right? Is that kind of, you know, yeah. the basis of it? Well, it's not only the basis it. because okay. it's definitely so, I mean, a salon. So I, like, it's a salon, like, you know, it's not, it's, it is, it's, it's a salon, honey. Come here to work. Okay? You, you're going <laughs> to learn because you're going to see us working, honey. We ain't coming. <laughs> Come here to work. It's a lawn. Ain't no Ed, no, it ain't that. Ain't okay, no you ain't come here to learn. You're here to work. <laughs> ain't no <Got> school. You. <laughs> you pick things up. You, and that's, I, and that's, that's what school. I like about my salon. Like, I, yeah, I hire, I hire girls that are really good so that when you come in, you, oh, yeah, you'll learn from me, but I want to learn from you too. You just, everybody just can't come, just keep yeah. sucking from the mentor. You just don't keep sucking. Like, we want to be replenished as well. You know what I mean? So, the reason why I decided to yeah, open a salon is not, you know, not necessarily. I didn't want to go back behind the chair because it was that was going to be hard. But like you said, I was I was still busy. But I really wanted to create yeah. a space that that wasn't available when I was doing my thing. You know, when I worked in the salon, I started to really juggle. Like I started to have to call out and do my celebrity clients because they were just calling like, "Um, oh, we need you for the, for this. We need you for that." And I'm like, "All right." So I wish I had that foundation that would have helped me like keep my clientele together because like maybe 10, 10 years past and I hadn't seen a lot of my clientele when they ran into me on the street it would be like oh my god where you at and I'm like nowhere like I wish I had a salon that would have <laughs> helped me so uh, you know while I was massaging my, my, my new found career to still help me yeah to create to, to keep what I had there so I could still come back and still have that form of income because when I was transitioning from behind the chair to just doing um freelance only i was broke like i have no money like it was it was one of the toughest that's a memorable moment that's yeah, a memorable what? moment when, when i when i when i was not making any money like transitioning from being behind the chair into doing freelance uh -huh. full time it was a really rough it was rough for me financially very rough so like i said the reason why i opened the salon is not just for me to get back behind the chair but just to create a a a a, a dope space for stylists like me that want to work in a salon and, and work with somebody that understands that possibly I might want to step out, but I don't want to leave. I want to still build, still work on building a clientele and having a, having a, a salon home. And that's important. It's important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Guys, if you guys want to ask questions, ask in the question box. I'm looking through some of the comments, but try to ask in the question box a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, Ursula, okay, real quick. So you never told me some of your, like, the looks. Give me a, a favorite. Okay. One. It doesn't even have to be Rihanna or Zendaya, but give me some of your, okay. like, I'm proud of that work. Give me proudest moments. Definitely proud of Zendaya's Joan of Arc look for Met Ball. That was, like, absolutely amazing. I, I loved it. it and it's it was. Because I nailed it. Because, you, know, you know, luxury, you know, everybody knows luxury law. And Law is of very course. tough, and he was like, it got to be the specific red. And I was like, oh, my God, he going to kill me today. Today yes. I'm going to die. Yes. I had about, uh, yeah, I had about, uh, yeah, I had about 20, 20 red wigs. Like, he better like, it, he better like one of these wigs today. So when he actually get, we called him on FaceTime to show him, because we already started hearing makeup, but, you know, he's running around different clients, and we show him on FaceTime, and he's, like, giving that little smirk, like, <laughs> I, knew I, got, I knew I nailed it. 
So that sticks out in my head. Love that. Also love the Cinderella look from Met Ball, which came as a big surprise for all of us. I love they, that Cinderella they look law, too. Yeah, they yeah. Yeah. and law. They kept that secret from the whole yes. team. They they were the only ones that knew what was happening with the dress. Like literally, yeah. like that was just amazing. Like I didn't even know that was happening. So wait, Honestly, so you didn't even. No, not until the day of they was kind of like saying like it's supposed to do this, and then we finally get to the fitting, and I'm like, oh, 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 hold, let me fix this piece of hair. Hold up, hold <laughs> up. Let me go back in. Let me tighten this up because it was that I, was she such never said an it, iconic moment. Big surprise, yeah, that was good. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, y'all killed that. Yeah, y'all killed that. Yeah, okay, um, and and then Rihanna looks faves. Uh, definitely short black pixie. Um, what's this video? Oh my god, there's so many videos. Uh, take a bow. Um, take a bow. I'm trying to, I have so many. Might have been take a bow. Was it take a bow? It might have been take a bow. Short black hair. Okay. That was good. Little I love. I love. Yeah, I, yeah. I, the the red era was memorable because I it was a very love hate relationship with the with the red era. Why? That red era was, it was a nightmare. Yeah, it was. Just so you guys know. So anytime, after we got rid of that red hair, people was like, bring back red Rihanna. I said, like, shut the fuck up now! Because that, first of all, red, red, was iconic. Tell you about red, red, red was, how it came about was, 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 a, was crazy because I was literally going, I think, to Brazil to do her for something. And I had already packed up my stuff, like, you know, prepped all my stuff, had my ready ready and then her assistant hit, her assistant hit me like um yo bring everything to turn her red and I was like what so now I had to before I go to the to the um <laughs> to the airport I gotta stop and buy all this red everything red just red because now she she wants to go red and we had been speaking about it for quite some time but we didn't do it yet we didn't know when we were gonna do it and then and I and so that it's memorable because of that and I didn't want to do it yet because it was not in my element I was going to Brazil like I I didn't want to switch her over that a major change like that, and it was like not in my element. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's yeah, why yeah. it was memorable. Two red fades every second of the day. That hair faded. So every and with every texture you try to do, if you try to do straight, curly, what up, wavy, the red is going to read differently because remember, remember, I'm even though her hair is colored, I'm coloring extensions. So every extension would take the red differently. So it was like, oh, wasn't her hair red a different red last week? Or what? And it's like. I'm trying to keep it the same, but it's not happening. Because the child want to change her hairstyle every week, so it's not working. Like, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. It was just crazy. But on the flip side, I really loved when I, I, I think it was the EMAs, and it was red, and I, I put it into, like, a big bouffant. Like, it was really big, and it was just, and the dress was big, and I, that was one of my happy moments with the red hair, for sure. So I, I have my love-hate with the red. Some good moments Ooh. and some bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it was so iconic. All the girls wanted that red hair after that. Oh, um, tell me about it. And then what was the, what was the what was it when you had the clips in her hair? Oh, that was the doobie. That was doobie. That, that was the doobie. Yeah, that was VMA. I think that was VMA. I think that was VMA as well. I might have been. I can't. I think it was. I don't know. But yes. yeah, the doobie was memorable. That was memorable because I did not want to do it at all. You did? I seen Rihanna. She was on tour. No, I did not want to do it at all. I was. A, she was on tour. Like she, she did like a little tour. And at that point, I think I wasn't really doing much tours anymore. Um, so I hadn't seen her. So when she came in for the prep, like she'll fly in. I flew into LA. She flew in from wherever she was. And I get to the hotel. She tells me what? She, what? I'm like, you know, mad attitude. I'm just like, I don't know about that. And you know, everybody in the room, everybody, you know, got the dresses, everything out, everybody hype, and I'm just like, I'm the one person like, I don't really know if I, I don't know. And she's like, you sure? No, no. So we, now we talk about it, and now she's hyping me up, and then I'm like, you know what? She could pull anything off. Like, let's just do it. Let's do it. She could pull it off. And then, and then, yeah, she could do it. And then when we did it, everybody went so crazy. They had to text her. Like, I, I think I left to go right back to New York the next morning. So like early morning, I texted her like, you was right, yo. Like, you killed it. You could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was very memorable. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love that moment. That was iconic. Wait, let me see mm -hmm. what question I might have. Um, oh shit, did this thing freeze? Okay, okay. Three, um, I can't even see that far, so I'm not even trying to see oh. who commented and talking. What was your favorite look you did on Mary? Oh yeah, you did Mary. 
Oh, Mary. Oh, I love Mary so much. Mary is a, a dream to work with. And nothing what you would expect. Nothing what you expect of Mary. Like I was, I was always so shocked at her, her demeanor. She's just so like she's just so calm and so easy going and no fuss, no nothing. Like she's always a pleasure to, to work with. Um, my favorite look on Mary. I like when Mary was wearing her bowl cut. That was nice. I loved her bowl cut. I didn't, I didn't I like start that. the look, yes. but I was on. I yes. think I was on tour with her and she wore it and I just I maintained her and and it was she just okay. I just love her. I love her with anything yeah. like. I, I miss now. I kind of miss her with short hair, but now the long hair. I'm just like, yes, Mary, you, you kill it. She killing the long hair right now. She's she's into it. She's <laughs> I love it. Oh shit! What happened? Hello? Yo, they are playing me. Ursula left us, guys. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Hello. Hello. I don't yeah. know why he's doing it. I don't Instagram know. Instagram is playing us. You know. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we we about to wrap up anyway. Okay. Um, I do yeah. want to know, like, what advice? What advice would you have for stylists right now? It could be in Corona world or just in general. What's a solid piece of advice for someone? Um, yeah, who's trying to get where you are? Uh, I think you know, really one try your best to keep continue to sharpen your craft you know like you see all these videos these crazy videos people cutting grass that's real like when you're a hairstylist and you have passion you will you can see anything and cut it and and and, and sharpen your, your craft so maybe you may, may maybe you can't find any grass out here in brooklyn but continue to sharpen <laughs> your, the best way the best way you can the best way you can um uh just remember that they can't take away our skill they can do whatever they want, but they can't take away our skill. Remember that. Ooh, that's it. Remember that. Do the work yeah. the same. You want another Drop one? You want another one? For, another, another one. one. I, another I, think one. I dropped the mic already, but I'll give you another one. This is for the young, the, the, the young up. stylist that is the young, the young stylist that you know they are so adamant and they see me, people, you know, stylists like myself and you know the Kim Kimballs and you know the. Kendall Dorsey's and you know just all the all the all the hair stylists right now. You see all of what's popping, but understand that I can I, I can't speak for everybody else, but I know I can speak for myself. That hard work is what will bring you here. So do the work, and the fame will follow. If you are if your drive is just to be around a celebrity because you think it's gonna be cool and it's gonna be fun, your bubble will get burst very quickly so one more time do the work and the fame will follow and scene <laughs> yes everything to me that's a moment okay we're gonna do a quick round of either or and then word association and then we out okay either or um music video or commercial Ooh. <sighs> Music video. <laughs> Compassion or tough love? Tough love. Tough love. So, so when are we a wig? So when? Um, Paris or New York? Oh, New York. New York. Amazon Prime or Netflix? Netflix. Short or long? Both. Whatever I want. Like <laughs> curly or straight. Ah, uh, straight. Uh Obama or Oprah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wow. <sighs> yeah, that stumps that's a lot a of tough people. One. Yeah. That's a tough one. I'll let you come back. Uh, well, no, pick one. Say, say. You know what? No, Oprah. Just cause she, you know, she gave me eight. She gave me 25. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Exactly. Oprah been around. Okay. Um, early yeah. morning or late night? Ooh, late night, baby. Late night. Yeah. Good girl gone bad or loud? Ooh, loud. Well, 
Yeah, it's the only girl in the world. Yeah. All those moments, all that. Oh, what? But you had your own experience yeah, loud, loud. as just the music. So, okay. Yeah, okay. so it's like, that. that's um, what I'm thinking about more. I'm thinking more of that. You know, when, when I had to choose, I to go, I'm thinking of the experience of loud. <laughs> so, loud. It's a fun time. Okay. <laughs> um, call or text? Text me, please. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I wish I had time for word association, but I think it's going to cut me off. Wait, let me try. Rihanna. Try, try. Uh, a, bl a big old blood? Is that, is that you? What's the word? What, what, when you say her name, I have to, whatever, whatever. Word association, what, whatever you think. Whatever you think. Yeah. Oh, a big old blood. A big mind. old blood. Rihanna. Yeah, a big old, a big old Yes. Story. Yeah. Weave. Weave. Me. Zendaya. Oh, I love her. Little sister. <laughs> Blow, blowout. Oh, I'm over it. <laughs> Passion. What I'm made of. 100%. Yes, legend. Oh. Ooh. Legend. Ah! <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, All right. Pass. Fine. <laughs> you like pass. All right. Forget that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna. We gonna take him out of here with this. Tell me what is a quote to live by for the people. What's a quote you live by? A quote that I live by sounds corny, but work hard, play harder. Yeah. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah. I love it. That's it's a good real. one. Wait, let me real. see if I have any last minute questions. And that's mm -hmm. real. Oh my yeah. God. Um, that's real. Okay, wait. All right. You know what? It's not actually about to cut us off. Um, favorite look on Queen Latifah? Oh, um, I haven't done one yet. I haven't done a favorite look yet because I feel like every time I do Queen Latifah, it's always a rush. Like the timing with her and us, like it's the hair and makeup is always just like ponytail. So I haven't got a chance to really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, answer this and that'll take us out, I believe. Three must have tools that you can't live without. Definitely a fly iron, um, uh, my razor comb, and a uh, teasing comb. Perfect. I love it. Ursula, thank you. Oh, the countdown just started. I got two minutes to this cutting us off. I appreciate yeah. you so much. You're an icon. You're a legend. And I feel honored that you want to come up here and talk to me. Thank you for sharing with Yay. the kids. I appreciate you. Um, you good luck me. with the salon and all that's happening. Let me know if yes. you need me for anything. I'm here. Is all there right, anything you want to say to the people? Thank you guys so much for joining us. And I love the fact that everybody's inspiring everybody. So let's continue to keep supporting everybody's lives mine his everybody's because it's all we have guys to stay Ursie's chair time. sunday at six o'clock Ursie's chair at 6 p.m live sunday yeah. we lit bye we lit thank you Ursie. all right bye all right you guys before it cuts me off like it did yesterday i just want to say goodbye um tomorrow i have ej who is the ceo and founder of crowd management an amazing management um firm for creatives um, and he's going to come on and he's going to drop gems about branding, about strategy, about when you're ready for management. So get your questions ready. And thank you guys for another amazing live. I appreciate you, Ursula. Thank you, Jess, for making that work. And yeah, I'm clocking out. Peace.